Okay. Uh, so, hello. Um, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, Eric. Thank you for invitation. Yes. Um, my name is Mertz Mensch. Um, so this is my pseudonym, and I am uh, known for this name. So that's why let's take this name. Um, so Can I call you um, Mers. I always think of you as Mers. Yes, of course, Mers. Okay. Yes. And uh, the background of my uh, name is probably um, some of you know um, the German Dadaist and avant-gardist Kurt Schwitters created Mertz uh, art, um, um, some kind of um, transmedial artworks uh, com combined from different materials, mixed techniques. And so this is my, um, it was my interest because I am researching about Schwitters as well, Schwitters and uh, about, about um, avant-gardists. Um, and so, um, but this is not the topic of today. Probably, probably mm -hmm. it is. <laughs> so, we may get into it. We might, yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes. So, uh, to my background, again, I'm uh, I'm coming from uh, the cultural and art studies um, from uh, academic uh, field, so to say. Um, and uh, my main point of interest was uh, historical avant-garde, but also I was very interested for new technologies. And so I um, found the um, interesting um, interesting merge. Uh, so to say, between uh, new technologies and art, uh, back to the 2016 or 2015 even, mm. um, after I've read uh, the essay by an um, American poet and uh, scientist, uh, Ross Goodwin. Uh, he wrote a series of essays, um, Adventure um, adventure in Narrative... Um, just one, please, I have to look it up. Uh, adventure... Um, in narrative, um, just one second, sorry. Okay, um, well, uh, let's uh, go further. Um, yes, this one uh, Adventures in the Red Reality. Um, probably I can just uh, share my screen and show you some of. Uh, the images which might be re uh, relevant for you. Yes. So how my I... um, yes, thank you. Yes, um, okay. Uh, are you are you okay. able to share screen? Yes, one please. Um, okay. Uh, share screen. Yes. Uh, no, I uh, still cannot. Sorry. Oh. How about now? Yes, I can. Right. Okay. I will share it with sound. Excellent. So, um, okay. So um, here you can see uh, the link to to this uh, to this series of essays by Ross Goodwin, um, and these essays opened my eyes. To say it was it was for me some kind of epiphany because I um, haven't so I never uh, was thinking about uh, AI as a tool for creative expression. For me, it was like uh, a predictive analytics, object detection, something like this, but um, uh, that AI could also create something creative. It was for me something completely unbelievable to that time, yes? Mm. And so um, uh, in his essays, he uh, he wrote about his experiments with, um, the, with his um, language model, um, it was pre-GPT-2, uh, pre-GPT-3. Um, and uh, using this model, uh, he trained this model on different screenplays and he created uh, several new screenplays. One of them is um, Sunspring, um, a short movie with Middle Ditch. Um, so the text was created or plot or entire dialogues were created by AI. And uh, the, um, the actors... Um, uh, acted this absurd piece of text. And uh, it was for me very interesting to see because I've, I've seen, okay, um, AI um, has some kind of message and it, it creates some kind of um, narrative landscapes and uh, entire world, uh, cosmology, so to say. So mm -hmm. it was for me really uh, eye-opening. 
And then I've read also his book, Wonder Road, which he um, created using a car. So he was driving, I think, from the west to the east coast. This car was uh, equipped with a camera, with a um, GPS sender, uh, with a small laptop and with a microphone and with this um, um, language model. And so um, during the entire road movie, so to say, but it's, it's a book, um, it uh, mixed the conversations within the car, the data of the location, Wikipedia um, entries regarding these locations and created the road movie book, um, practically, uh, 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 so to say, about uh, America. <laughs> and I found it very, very interesting. <laughs> this was for me uh, the first uh, impact, so to say. And so um, it was 2015, I think. Uh, okay, the book is, is, is later. Um, and then I uh, stumbled upon the Google Deep Dream. It, it, this was for me the next step uh, where, I've saw, uh, where I've seen, uh, okay, AI is more than just uh, uh, the, um, object detection. Because here, uh, the researchers, they use the capability of AI to detect the objects in an image, but they uh, take a, st a step um, further because they ask AI to emphasize what AI sees in this image. And uh, they, they ask AI to change this image, uh, to edit or to modify the image. And um, they use it uh, um, so using para, um, um, paraidolia. I mean, this is the fa uh, this is a phenomenon which we are know. Uh, for example, the Jesus faces in toast bread or you know um, faces um, everywhere because our brain is trained during the evolution to recognize faces or recognize some uh, familiar uh, structures and patterns. Uh, especially um, if we are like a prehistorical human being and wandering um, um, around the, uh, the forest and we mistook um, a bush with a tiger, it's better that we uh, think too much about it would be a tiger mm -hmm. uh, and be aware of it uh, instead of not, uh, not seeing it, not seeing the danger. And, and, and so, so uh, just to clarify for for uh, students who may not be familiar with this this word paradoilia, yes, uh, which I'm probably not pronouncing correctly. It's this this um, tendency to perceive to make sense of noise, basically. Yes, absolutely. In, in when we look at things, and yes. so for example, uh, oh, maybe you have some examples. So I'll let you do that. Yes, for example, okay. here you can see uh, the Mars face, the famous Mars face. Of course, for, for everybody knows this is not a face, this is a rock formation. But uh, our brain can detect some kind of patterns in some specific uh, distance from each other, and we see already a face. And we cannot, uh, we, it's hard to convince a brain that this is not a face, because our brain is trying to find these patterns. Um, and AI, if trained on some specific data, um, does the same thing. So uh, if we train AI to detect some specific objects, it will detect these objects because it's trained on it. Like we humans are trained uh, during the evolution. But uh, Google Deep Dream do, uh, did something quite different. So here is uh, Mona Lisa uh, created or um, reinterpreted by, uh, by Google Deep Dream. Um, so we can see here something uh, very wired, like uh, creatures and something, uh, monsters, I don't know what. Um, and the question was why we see here so many dog faces. The mm -hmm. answer was uh, the researchers, because uh, to, to, train deep, um, to train Deep Dream, it was pretty hard for the hardware, it, it, so they needed too much power. They used just small data set with dogs inside of it. And so that's why um, the system detected everywhere dog faces mm -hmm. or something like dog faces because it didn't know anything else. And this is my, my first take that um, to 
to create an AI which can, uh, which could be capable of creating art, we have to train it on as more data as possible, because by limiting the knowledge of AI, we limit its creative capability as well. Um, yes. Yeah, so um, this was my first. Uh, steps and then I just this is my uh, my user pick. I modified it uh, with Google Deep Dream and it was pretty uh, free. <laughs> so yeah. just to just to reiterate, yes, Deep Dream, it's it's learned um, from a very small at the time collection of data, which mostly was as you said, dogs, yes. uh, animals, lizards. Yes, and so this paradoia that we're talking about is is kind of um, reproduced when when we ask the tool, um, yes. which we'll discuss that designation in a moment. But when we ask it to find um, mm -hmm. patterns in the Im images, it mm -hmm. can only reference the patterns Absolutely. that it has seen. And Absolutely. so it's reproducing yes. these uh, dogs and hippopotamuses mm -hmm. and yes. um, creating this kind of experience from the limited data that it mm -hmm. had encountered in that data set. Yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. That's right. why uh, it, it it won't um, detect here cars or um, human faces because they were not included in this database. In this database. And so uh, I just. I will just skip um, this part a little bit um, because I want to speak about my like uh, further experimentation. Um, so this is um, StyleGAN. I think you speaking about you know what StyleGAN is. So mm -hmm. I don't uh, have to uh, to so to emphasize the meaning for art for AI art because StyleGAN was very important step towards digital and AI art. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you can use style game meanwhile uh, in different uh, approaches, like um, in Runway ML, for example, mm -hmm. and also using uh, notebooks, uh, different collab notebooks, uh, or via Art Breeder. So I, I was a passionate uh, user of Art Breeder as well. Um, and so in this Art Breeder um, gave me um, new possibilities to express myself. For example, here I use my face as, as reference uh, to create new faces. But I mean, uh, you probably did it already. So this is nothing new. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. probably uh, two years ago, it was uh, something pretty, pretty new, I would say. I, I, uh, yeah. and, and that's important to, to emphasize that yeah. two years ago, this is when this this started really happening. There were some massive explosions in yes. The ability to to generate images and, and you mentioned earlier mm. that before this the idea of making an image with an ai itself mm. was was almost like nonsense absolutely right? yeah yeah. The, yeah 2019 2015 yeah i mean here we see uh, just uh, for example this is my favorite tweet uh, ever this is the development of gans so mm. uh, 2014 you can see here um the face looks like a Mars face. Yes. I, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty unsharp, uh, but you can, of course, uh, recognize a face. Uh, 2018, this is Steigen, this is Steigen 1 still. I think it was Steigen 1. Mm -hmm. um, and this was 20, 2018, so four years ago. Then Steigen 2 came, and then Steigen 3, and um, now we have diffusion models like DALI, Mid Journey, Stable Diffusion, and this development is really exciting and interesting to see um, because we are right now um, at the beginning of a new art epoch, and you all are experiencing it uh, because later, I think, uh, some, decades, some decades later, people will write uh, art books about what what is happening right now, and well, you're uh, currently writing one. Yeah, yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I'm writing one. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and this is, uh, and everybody of, uh, so every artist who uh, embrace uh, AI as uh, a tool, as a core uh, creator, and so on, I will speak about it later as well, mm -hmm. um, is part of this movement. And this is, this is really absolutely interesting.
So I will just skip a little bit. Um, um, uh, so probably uh, you see, uh, you've heard about uh, GPT-2 and GPT-3, the text model, mm -hmm. uh, the language model, um, which is really amazing. So uh, in my experience, this is one of the best, of, I mean, GPT-3 is at the moment still the best creative textual model uh, because it can create literary works. It can create poetry and uh, really interesting textures. Um, and so um, I was very interested for these, um, these systems. And this is my advice to you. If you are interested uh, about new technologies as well, or about art, about something, just drop in, just go there and ask people, uh, don't hesitate. Uh, this was, this is really interesting because the uh, traditional art world uh, sounds like, you know, elitist uh, uh, barrier where the artists are uh, on the pedestal and uh, people are looking up to them and say, oh, this is uh, something completely far away and so on. Of course, this is completely nonsense and uh, already uh, historical uh, avant-garde, Duchamp, Dadaist, Surrealist, Fluxus people, uh, they said, everybody said that um, everybody can become an artist. And um, this is, I think, very important to understand that the criticism towards this traditional art scene is still now here and what we are experiences with um, experiencing with AI art, with all the groups and movements, uh, I see here many parallels with uh, what we've experienced um, um, 100 years ago in the in the 1920s, um, with the same criticism about the traditional art. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was very interested for GPT-2 and GPT-3, and so I just asked OpenAI um, uh, to get access because uh, back to the 2020, um, the access to GPT-3. Yes. Sorry, just to, to interrupt you. I, I'm seeing your um, your window. Uh, yes. I don't know if you mean to go full screen. Ah, uh, okay, sure, of course. Um, okay. Can okay. I see it? Okay, yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So sorry. Uh, in 2020, you were yes. You asked OpenAI for some uh, access. To access, you know, to access, um, and uh, I've, I just skip it because it's uh, for the moment not really relevant. Um, and so I have got the access to GPT-3 back to the time as it was on the wait list. Um, and just to compare, GPT-2 was trained on 40 gigabyte text and 8 million pages. GPT-3 was trained on 570 gigabyte text, and I don't know how many million pages, but I still use GPT-2 with call-up notebooks to train uh, GPT-2 on my own uh, texts, essays, literary works, and so on, to create new versions, to create new texts. And this is still really amazing. So um, even if GPT-2 is pretty weak compared to GPT-3, but as a tool, you can create very interesting things, even using this older model. And so um, after a while, I wrote about it in my in my magazine, uh, in my blog, um, a lot. And uh, OpenAI asked me uh, to become some kind of uh, community uh, ambassador. So we are a small group uh, worldwide, and we help people to orient in GPT-3, in DALI, in different approaches. And this is voluntarily work. So I don't work for, for OpenAI. I just uh, work with them or mm -hmm. like uh, uh, take part on this uh, story. Um, but we have a weekly call. So they uh, so they talk to, to us about the newest um, um, developments. And also they give us the access to the models or to the systems which are not published. So, uh, for example, last year I had uh, already the access to DALI 1, which was never published because DALI 2 was published in this uh, in this August, uh, in, in April. Right. Um, it was, it, it's, it's just, I'm speaking about uh, it not to break or something like this, just um, to, to show that um, uh, everybody can um, take the step further and look beyond the uh, the curtain 
And for me, for example, I'm not a coder. I have nothing to do with um, machine learning or I don't speak Python. But um, the, if you have the interest, you can just jump in and this huge world will, will, will be open to you. And this is just, uh, uh, just uh, an advice. Don't be shy. Just ask everybody and you will get the answer. <laughs> Um, yes, and so I created many things, uh, so several short movies using uh, StyleGen and Art Breeder with the GPT-2 as screen um, player. Um, I just spring it. Um, okay, uh, I can probably show one of these uh, movies because it's just two, min uh, two minutes. Um, so um, just, uh, just for background, um, GPT-2 created for me this uh, screenplay. My my prompt was this one, an empty room. A man enters the room. He looks out of the window and says it still has begun. The woman enters. She has a white dress on and a book on in her hand. Uh, so here I wrote a prompt. This is very, very important word in the art of 21st century, prompt. <laughs> um, because this is my human input. And this is this is the story which uh, GPT-2 created. And so I took this story and uh, created for the first the characters uh, for this movie. Then I created the backgrounds. I used Art Breeder back to the time, it was 2020. Uh, and I created the, uh, the voices using AI as well. Um, for this, I used uh, Replica Studio because Replica Studios has, in my experience, very theatralic voices. So they are not li like uh, the news anchor men, but really mm -hmm. like uh, from the globe, you know, uh, really great. Um, and here is this short movie. And the music was, uh, was written by Jukebox, another um, music system created by OpenAI as well. Uh, they trained uh, it on one million songs and music pieces. Um, and here is this short movie. Um, yes. I hope so. At the beginning, it's, it's pretty silent. Empty room. A man enters the room. He looks out of window and says, it still hasn't begun. The woman enters. She has white dress on and a book in her hand. I am waiting as well. For how long? For a while. Ah, uh, you know, I'm a very patient man. I know, of course. I'm going to have to be less patient then. The woman starts to long. The Lauter has an ominous edge that only she can feel. In my defense. I never actually told you what it was I was going to tell you. That's right. So you are lying behind me. The man is surprised by the abruptness of the accusation. He does not however feel any anger, as he has noticed in previous encounters it is the woman who is most convincing, when she's saying the lies. But it was not what you expected. Oh, no. She is trying to sound convincing. He wants to ask her about her mother. Do you think she'll be willing to lie? The man turns down the opportunity. Maybe... Tell me why. Maybe she's still grieving. She is smiling when she says this. And the man doesn't think she'll be the first to smile when the truth comes out. He gives up. No. It's not over. The man has not got to see her family again. He had hoped to return to his work. He has nothing else to do. He wants to be a man. In this piece, you can see um, the um, surreal situation, the, the conversation between these people, pretty David Lynch uh, mm -hmm. alike. <laughs> and uh, what I love about this um, this uh, screenplay, um, you see many uh, background histories or something not really spoken, outspoken, so as if there is a huge history which uh, the um, uh, which are hidden behind the narrative. 
And um, we, as spectators, uh, it's up to us to understand what's going on there. Um, and this was one the first time probably where I understood that um, the AI art is about perception and about interpreting it, very about the subjective perception, because um, what we get here is not um, created by a writer with some specific intention, it's created by AI. Uh, and the intention, the, back, the background history, everything, uh, it's up to, um, to take it and to play with it if we want. That's why it's not for everybody, of course. There are people who would say, okay, it's just some kind of gibberish, uh, just random uh, stochastic parroting, I don't know, um, regurgitating of uh, data sets. Uh, that's why it doesn't bother me. But there are people like me uh, who are trying to understand what's going on there and who are trying to create a history or, or, or story or plot inside your head. And this is, I think, uh, the, what about the difference? So like um, um, AI art is probably not for everybody, <laughs> I would say. It, it, it sounds to me like your, your approach is to create things that are kind of invitations uh, for yeah. the viewer to, to co-create yes. a story. Or, so yes. your film that we just watched is, is not telling a story per se in the sense that as you as you just described a, a writer put something down yes and it is interesting you you mentioned david lynch right mm -hmm. and and um i don't know that we will talk about david lynch's work because he, he's not doing an ai arts approach mm -hmm. but this um surrealist approach yeah. is to say um we can put things together right mm -hmm. david lynch famously has said he 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 waits for images and he writes yes, the images yeah. on a note card and when he has 70 note cards he makes a movie mm -hmm, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and so he he famously refuses to define his work as well mm -hmm. right he refuses to give an explanation and just like you say the it alienates many viewers they don't mm. want they the, oh another david lynch movie it's yeah. just <laughs> noise gibberish mm. but other people love it they get into it they see it as a dream Yes, um, absolutely. As an experience, as an invitation to put something together, mm -hmm. regardless of mm -hmm. the intent of of his writing, his film work. Yes. So I, I want to reiterate that point because it's mm -hmm. it's it's a key distinction that some AI artists um, may embrace, whereas mm -hmm. others may say, well, as you said, yeah, my work is doing something different, or my work mm -hmm. touches on other things, mm -hmm. or they, as you say. Some people may reject this approach altogether. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you, uh, you've mentioned very important term, dream, because mm -hmm. um, what uh, what combines or like um, connects um, AI art with surrealism is indeed in surrealism um, we uh, we experience the uh, dream conceptions or um, sub um, so uh, subconsciousness subconsciousness uh, so to say. Um, and in case of AI, for example, in case of Stylegen, um, we see the latent space. So this latent space, which was um, trained on, uh, so I, um, it was trained, for example, the, the images were trained on data set, but we look into the latent space, into the um, it of the, uh, of the machine, the same with the text is as well. Um, and this is the dreaming. So in my opinion, in my experience, or I even tell about hallucination of machine, dreaming of the machine. So, I, I mean, Philip K. Dick asked whether uh, the androids dream about electric ships, uh, androids dream about everything, and this is really exciting. Can you can you go into a little bit of a, a definition of latent space as the, way, the term yes. you're using? Yes, well, um, latent space, uh, for example, uh, my another project was, and I just uh, switched to, the, to another presentation. Just one, please. Um, was to train. Okay, just one, please. Was to train um, style as a style again using run by ML uh, on uh, my own photography. So 
just uh, just for background, my father was I, so I wrote here as well. My father was um, a photographer and a photojournalist, so he created a lot of photos, uh, so around uh, forty thousand of photos, and um, uh, so I'm about to to, to digitalize uh, to digitalize these photos, and during this digitalization, I understood that I uh, that. He, because he, he passed away ten years ago, uh, and I am <clears throat> I found that I am uh, having his memories because um, what the photographer uh, see and capture through his uh, camera this is part of his memories. This is what he's seen, but he shared his memories with with other people uh, uh, by capturing of this moment, and so. I had many thousands of memories of my father uh, looking at, on these photos. And so in this case, I took just my photos because I posted a lot of uh, my own photos on Instagram. Um, I took all of them and used it as a training data set. And I did something what um, an ML uh, machine learning uh, specialist or engineer would never do. Because if you want to train uh, if you really want to train uh, Stalgen, you have to prepare a data set uh, of, say, dogs or houses or art or something like, something like this. Label it probably for better uh, uh, understanding. But for me, uh, among these photos, there were animals, uh, landscapes, houses, uh, just abstract things and so on. I just took it all and used it as a training data set just to, uh, uh, because I wanted uh, to see how Stalgen might reproduce my own memories. And so I used in, in, um, in, um, 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 so in Ryan, in Radway ML, the, um, the best, um, uh, so uh, Stalgen 2 with this pre-trained model, so faces, because I use it just because um, the uh, resolution of the results is the best here in this case. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, so this model was pre-trained on faces, but in my data set were no faces, probably some faces, but, but not so many faces. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, so I began to train, and um, with every step, StyleGen is learning what is going on. Do I have to to explain how does Stalgen work? Uh, probably short, very short. If you I, if you'd like to, uh, yes, of we course. will be going over it in, in class. But it's always good to hear of someone course. else's uh, perspective. Yeah, this is very this is very uh, just in short. Just one minute. Here I have uh, this presentation. So here uh, the the second one again. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Stalgen consists of two networks. One network is generator, and another is discriminator. And um, they are both trained on the same data set and they know the quality of the data set. And so uh, the generator creates new versions, new images. Uh, it, uh, the task of generator is to create as close image as possible, uh, so as realistic image as possible. The task of discriminator is to debunk these images as fake. Like if, if a generator creates an image and discriminator um, analyzes this image, compares it with a data set and says, no, it's, it's, it's a fake, it's mm -hmm. uh, not real. And um, generator uh, repeats it and during iterations, um, there is a moment where discriminator cannot distinguish between the real and fake image. And this image is uh, put into the latent space. So in, in, in short, um, latent space is a huge, I would say, even endless space of visions and images which discriminator um, um, understood as some kind of uh, real images. Mm -hmm. And um, every of these images have some kind of seed, so number. Um, and using run by ML, uh, this is probably one of the uh, rare possibilities, you can look to so browse into this latent space. You can like zoom in and see all these images, which are created. So uh, which are created during the training of StyleGen. So latent space is this 
hidden space with endless uh, amounts of images, um, millions of images. I don't know how uh, if there are limits. And uh, to to get some of the images, uh, you have uh, either uh, machine. Uh, I, I mean, a runway ML, which just uh, creates some random uh, numbers from the seed and takes the seed out and uh, present you. Uh, or you can also use notebooks where you even can enter some specific seed and uh, uh, take it out. And if you know this seed, you can uh, every time take the same image because this uh, this image in Latin space has this seed. But of course, there, there are even more deep dive, so uh, it's a uh, longer history. Mm -hmm. But this is really interesting to see. And just uh, interestingly, um, just one, please. Um, I what wanted to, to show. Yes. So um, I found uh, many images which were created. Um, so this is um, an image which was created during training on my, on my memories, on my photography, on my memories. Mm -hmm. And looking on this image, I can uh, I found out that uh, I see here some other images which were in data sets. So these are photos by me. So I made these photos. Um, and I see here some kind of um, aesthetical parallel. So it's mm -hmm. like some kind of uh, archaeology or paleontology or etymology of the image. Or, for example, this image uh, created by AI or by Stelgen too. Uh, this is, it could be probably part of this uh, or this, like uh, patterns and color. Or here you can see as well, like um, something with drops, water drops. Could be probably this one mm -hmm. or this one. So you can you can find um, these images which were which were created by Stalgento uh, in your data set. Like and uh, in this case, uh, discriminator said, okay, this is this looks like this one because it's it's really realistic. So I would say this is uh, not a fake. This is a real one. Mm -hmm. This is what fascinated me. Interestingly, during the process. Uh, if you train it with um, runway ML, you see step by step how um, does the knowledge of Stalgen to change. So it was trained on faces, and for the first, it creates just faces, which which are not uh, here within this dataset. But after some time, the faces disappear, so and they began to be something like probably cursed uh, images, so to say. Mm -hmm. Because um, and then um, for me it was interesting to find something in between where the faces disappear and my images began to be recreated. Some, some something in, in between, and I found such semi faces which were pretty interesting. And uh, one of the faces I used uh, uh, in so in the album uh, um, "Latent Voices," which uh, you uh, produced for. Um, um, for our uh, project. <laughs> yes, yes. I'll share Thank that before, yeah. before outside, yes. Yeah. And uh, this is, by the way, how does the um, latent, um, latent space browser looks like in Runway ML. So you can uh, look in and um, like look for some specific face or some specific image, and you can change the settings, how close the image should be, how uh, different they should be, and so this is really um, um, amazing way. And um, yeah, so here are my memories. And for example, you see here after I think around six thousand steps, it created already some um, interesting images which I can understand, like uh, uh, landscape, or I mean uh, cityscapes, or probably car or some insects. Uh, or hear something interesting. Uh, so I made uh, a video as well. What is? Let me see. You can see here a car changing, interchanging. We just for, for experiments, and um, this is of of course experimentation, but uh, it's still not so uh, the epoch of experimentation. Uh, is followed by epoch of creation because for the first you have to know how does it work and uh, what do you can do with it and then the next steps uh, uh, come uh, later and so uh, 
now I would like to show the next step of my way of my journey, of my creative journey. Do I have time? Still? Yes, I wanted to. It, this is this is up to you. Uh, our call has fifteen minutes left to be scheduled, but okay. If you want to go a little longer, that's fine. I would um, uh, go and longer. I'll do some editing. Okay. Uh, yes, yes, I would, I would go longer. Okay. Um, Thank you. We, the class itself runs, we'll edit this out, obviously. Um, the class okay. runs an hour and 15. So as long as it fits within an hour and 15 minutes, ah, okay. we'll be okay. okay. Okay, great, great, great. Thank you. Um, and so um, the next step was, uh, I was oh, very interested. Sorry, it's, yeah. could you go full screen again? Ah, yes, of course. Yes. Okay. Um, so the next, uh, the next step was, um, I was also interested in music. Um, and there are different uh, music uh, approaches which are really interesting. So using AI, some of, of approaches are creating music like um, scores, music scores, which uh, are used in MIDI, for example, MIDI files. So you can create melodies. Uh, other are um, rather very experimental. By Jukebox, uh, so for me personally, Jukebox was very um, interesting because um, uh, created some kind of um, sound files, which are already uh, ready. So with uh, voices, with music, with um, background noises. And this is uh, pretty eerie for the first, but uh, after experimenting with AI since years, I don't know what's uh, uncanny valley. This doesn't exist for me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, and so I also, so this is, definitely, yeah, just for example, this is, um, this, these are two examples of um, jukebox music. Uh, this one, for example. So just for some uh, expression, it's, it's pretty melodical music. Another one is even with um, with the um, singing language. Uh, apropos language, Jukebox um, is a weak AI model. It's not uh, uh, it's not um, artificial general model. It can do just one task: audio uh, signals. That's why. Um, it was trained on different languages, on different songs, but what you, you hear here uh, is not English uh, or not some specific language. It's just trying to recreate something. Of course, if you enter your own lyrics into the notebook, and if you are lucky with this session, mm -hmm. you will get this text in the song, but not always. Sometimes it's something in between, so to say. And so I found this song is, is pretty nice as well. So on. So this is just uh, for the express uh, for the impression uh, that it's not gibberish. I mean, the language. In this case, I entered one poem which was created, uh, which was written by GPT-3, but uh, it's um, not completely this text, but uh, mixing with some kind of random uh, language patterns. And so this is this is our <laughs> this is our project. <laughs> um, and then I would like to present you just one please. What's going on here? Yes. So, um, but this was um, so my 
uh, probably one of most impactful experiences was um, Jukebox generated for me uh, at the beginning one sound file. And this sound file, I want just to, to let you listen to it. So, and this is the story where I became a tool of AI or a creative agency of AI because the soundtrack, it was not really music. It, it was some kind of wired um, recording from a documentary. So for mm. I experienced it as, as like a documentary about a world which was destroyed and this sad um, narrative, so a sad narration about the, the uh, past of this world um, and then singing about this world, it, 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 um, it impacted me uh, very emotionally. So I just wanted to help AI to articulate its dreams uh, to something visual, because uh, if I won't do it, it will just uh, be a, another file on my PC and the world will never know about this world, which was uh, destroyed. And uh, this was uh, my intention, to help AI to articulate its dreams. And so um, I used different approaches for it. Um, so I created the characters using art breeder still, uh, the backgrounds as well. Uh, also, I tried to recreate a language using um, art breeder too. Um, and then I use first order motion model because if you want to animate an image or animate a character, there are different approaches. My approach was the, motion, the first order motion model. So here you see the face of uh, an AI uh, expert, Jeffrey Hinton. And here you see the face of Nefertiti. And uh, we can, this is a video. This is a, a, a photo of this uh, um, artwork. We can uh, animate the photo using the um, facial movements in this case. And so this is how does it work. Okay, yeah. So this is Nefersiti, this is Jeffrey Hinton. It's sort of become the method of choice for recognizing speech. Um... And, and here what I did with Nefertiti. As you see here, it, it's moving pretty convincingly. So um, the animation of his face is uh, transported to, uh, to animation uh, to, to the face of Nefertiti. And so for this uh, movie, uh, there, uh, I used the first order, mod uh, first order motion model. There are actually two um, or more, but in this case, two uh, uh, kinds of animation of the faces. The, the first one is pretty easy. It's wolf to leap. Um, in this case, uh, the model, if, if you give uh, a model or AI model a sound uh, file, it will just uh, listen to it and try to articulate this uh, sound file. And uh, in this case, um, you will see this girl. By the way, this is photo of Franz Kafka, which I made to a girl using uh, Stalgen 2 as well. Um, she uh, reading uh, the monologue by um, Hamlet from Shakespeare. The voice was created by Jukebox. Thank God. Just me. No more than by thing to say. We end a holiday. I have thousand natural shocks. So you see, um, it's still moving. Uh, 
the, the, uh, the eyes are moving, the lips are moving as well uh, along to the sound file, but this is not so realistic. So it's still not really convincing. For the first order motion model, you have to act yourself. This is the human part because you are making a driver video, so to say, like in this case of Jeffrey Hinton. Um, and then this animation or movement of your face are transported to the face, uh, to the face of the image. This is first order motion model. Oh God, just me. no more embarrassing to say we end the holiday. A thousand natural shots. So it looks uh, way realistic. And so I think so, uh, th this yeah. is just uh, I want to re restate sort of what you're saying uh, yes. is that you you performed you lip you did a lip syncing of the Absolutely. of the audio. Yes. And so the the eye motion that we see, um, the movement of the lips, these are that's your face. Yes, absolutely. This my rendered face. Rendered into um, yes. this this uh, f female Franz Kafka. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And um, this is another example. So I asked Jukebox to write a song uh, with the text of Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll. And I mean, uh, there is no no a song uh, with this um, Dadaistic text. Um, but uh, and even of course Nat King Cole hadn't wrote such song. But I asked Jukebox to write a song by Nat King Cole, Jabberwocky, and then uh, it created a really convincing soundtrack. And then I took a just random photo of Nat King Cole and used first order motion model, um, first order motion model uh, to animate it. And here you are, um, Nat King Cole singing Jabberwocky. Was brilliant. And the slizy toes beguiled him to learn away all the miserables and the moment I have played. In this I have case, not seen that one. I love that. Okay, thank you. In this case, the uh, the lip sync is not really good because, but this is my fault. So, so I should do it better. Because uh, if you do it really good, in this case, I listened to the soundtrack and tried to sing along. So I tried, uh, usually, if you are a synchro, uh, so uh, if you are a dub uh, speaker, for example, if you are dubbing an animation, uh, you are trying to speak after the uh, lips of animation. Yeah, if you are, for example, translating an anime or uh, some kind of uh, animation. In this case, it's, uh, it's it's another way. You listen to the uh, to the sound, to the speech, and you are trying to move your your lips uh, exactly accordingly to this sound. But this is pretty pretty hard. Anyways, I uh, so this is how does it work. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, I comp. Uh, I uh, compiled all of these uh, things you've seen before into uh, into the traditional Premiere Pro by Adobe, um, and uh, here is it: this movie.
this is uh, this short movie, and uh, if you've seen um, in this case, um, if you've seen the language is not understandable, and um, this is like a um, perception of Voynich manuscript or of Codex uh, Serafinianus of you know this um, different approaches or takes on creating a culture uh, which the viewer cannot understand what's going on but can kind of uh, imagine or um, re, um, um, interpret it. And this is what this is my main take because the perception of AI art is um, emerging art. You are as pers uh, you, you, you as you are as spectator uh, are artist and storyteller as well for yourself. And for everybody who is uh, together with you in the same room, um, the story is quite different. So this is really interesting because um, this so usually the, the stories combine people or take people together. In this case, the story uh, is emerging within the, the human itself. And uh, the human begins to, to ask um, him or herself about their own uh, identity, your own meaning, your own um, faith, and so on. So this is um, this is why. So this is my credo. Uh, artificial intelligence is for me more than just a digital tool. It can assist. It can co-create. It can spark ideas and inspiration. And we can consider AI as modern news, because this is really the news. Yes. So this is. Um, I would say um, these experiments are probably one year old because after that uh, there were so many new, completely mind-blowing uh, developments with the clip notebooks, with DALI, with mid-journey, with stable diffusion. Um, visually, we are a decade uh, later, so to say, mm -hmm. because uh, this is really um, every week there is an, another model which makes all previous model look like very uh, antiquated. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and so I, I want to pause there and say we've been talking a lot about GANs, general adversarial networks, right? We and and I want to also emphasize that a great deal of the work that we're looking at the images. Um, that have been produced, that you've used, the music that you have produced, the texts, all of these are, actually, I'm not sure about the text. They are all general adv uh, uh, generative adversarial networks, yes. correct? Yes. And so um, this is essentially the same process. When we talk about AI and AI art, um, mm -hmm. it's such a big term because up until, I would say, diffusion, came around when we talked about AI arts, we we were talking about GANs, general yes. adversarial yes. networks for the most part, right? There are obviously some artists who are doing different things and, mm -hmm. and but for images, uh, as we saw in your work for sound, this is the same process. It's the same mm -hmm. approach, the same uh, underlying um, technological model for yes. producing and um, images, sound and text from other data from data yes. <laughs> sets um, that we we can supply. So I want to reiterate that because that yes. the the GAN uh, moment has mm -hmm. been I don't want to say eclipsed because I think there's still a lot of potential creative potential yes. from GANs, Absolutely. but diffusion has come along and mm -hmm. that was the spark, so to speak, that mm -hmm. really set off yes. um, this sort of um, current era. Mm -hmm. Which mm. is crazy because usually when we talk about eras of art, right, we talk mm. about decades. But yes. <laughs> Gans was mm. six years, maybe, if we mm. go back to the beginning in 2014, yes, yes. 2015. Mm. Um, but really, in practice, 2016 is probably mm. when it started becoming more, more people got their hands on it yes, um, yes. outside of Google. Right. Mm. Um, <laughs> this is when people like, like you and I could, mm. could access it and use it. Yes. Um, so this was maybe a five-year uh, yeah. lifespan before yeah. diffusion. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And this is, uh, I mean, five years before, 
um, nobody would even imagine that um, an AI could create an image of face, for example, like Stylegram 2, um, which one cannot um, really detect as a non-human uh, created image, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we are at the moment where um, we are discovering new layers or new um, levels of aesthetics. So mm -hmm. it, 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 it's uh, really, um, we are going deep into the machine, um, machine aesthetics. I, I, I'm sure in some years there will be new uh, studies about uh, psychology, aesthetics, um, linguistics of machines, uh, because what is going on here is really fascinating. It's not just uh, gibberish or stochastic parroting like uh, some might uh, say. This is really very, very interesting. Yeah. Well, um, this, this has been great. Um, I really appreciate the, the overview and the introduction to your work and really what I, what I love and what I, um, encourage s students to do anyone who's interested in this to do is, as you said, um, there's so many tools out there and you could combine them in all sorts of ways, right? Whereas this is the nice thing is even, even still there's collab notebooks, there's runway, um, yeah. there's, there's Dolly too. There's, um, you know, mid journey and dream studio and these kinds of things. Um, jukebox is still, mm. still there. You yeah. can still run jukebox. Mm. Um, and you can make your own workflow. You can make your own practice. It's really just, what is the story you want to tell? And mm. in some cases it's not even that, right? Yeah. It's <laughs> what do you want to play with? What do you want to experiment with? Yeah. And how can you combine these things in a way that are evocative, that share, uh, whether it's a story or an experience, or as you say, a dream with someone who might watch it, right? And yeah. co-create yeah. that, not just with an AI, but with the, the, the person using those AI tools to make these things. So um, it's a great yeah. lesson. And uh, I really, really appreciate that. Um, I just wanted to ask you a, a, a question, um, sure. which is about the, the controversies uh, around yeah. AI. What's what's a controversy that that is of, of interest to you that you follow or, mm -hmm. or feel strongly about these days? Well, there are different controversies uh, during entire history of AI. Interestingly, the first controversies uh, were coming from AI researcher um, back to the obvious days so uh, this this artist group obvious they create so they trained uh, the model on i think rembrandt uh, rembrandt mm -hmm. and they created new versions um, of this uh, of this painting and then they uh, sold it on sod bs with also for a big sum of money um, and then the uh, researchers who created uh, these data sets or who worked on these models uh, and which repositories were um, openly accessible at GitHub, they asked, what about us? Because uh, without our work, uh, without our work, this, um, this art wouldn't be possible. And so mm -hmm. it was really interesting question, uh, who is the author of this uh, text or of, of, the, of, the, of this image, I mean? Um, but now we face quite different uh, discussion which is more I would say dramatic emotional and um, publicly uh, prominent um, we embrace or we see how the artists are um, so I mean traditional artists so to say uh, they began to ask um, whether AI art uh, is a theft mm -hmm. uh, because the question is of course um, AI was trained on a huge database of artworks. And these artists within these artworks, if they still live, because many of the artists are from the classical art history, but um, the current artists were not asked to be included or uh, excluded uh, from or to this data set. Um, it was, there were several data sets which were 
which were prepared by different uh, by different companies or um, by Kaggle as well. So different initiatives um, and people just took this data sets to, to train um, the models on it. And so um, the question was uh, many people um, or many artists or even sometimes uh, these are not really artists, but people who don't really understand how do, uh, does AI work, they claim that um, AI art would be some kind of uh, resampling, uh, which is not an art, which is a theft uh, and so on. In my, uh, so I have some issues with this argumentation. First issue is I'm coming, so I'm studying Kurzschwitters and Dadaists, who, um, I mean, Picasso invented college, but the Dadaists used the, the college uh, many, so, uh, um, very intensely. Of course, they asked not these newspapers or these photographs or this, I don't know, uh, uh, people who create the sources to uh, snip out uh, from these images some kind of parts and to glue them together into their own artwork never so they ask uh, never uh, uh, the uh, originator so to say mm -hmm. but this is art in my opinion uh, Marcel Duchamp he took uh, so with his ready-made just an object and changed just the context of this object where is uh, this object uh, to say positioned in in a restroom or in museum and then um, the entire storytelling and the uh, value and the um, um, aesthetical perception of this object is changed. So, um, and Duchamp, interestingly, Marcel Duchamp said in one interview, uh, a very, very interesting thing. Uh, he was against on this um, religion alike, um, uh, like uh, a cult uh, uh, around art. Um, because he said uh, the art is uh, uh, can be uh, the, can, uh, the art can be made by everybody, and he hoped that one day the time will come with art will be created without human interference and without human influence. We are experiencing uh, this time right now because, um, of course, we still uh, interact with the machines, we train machines, we we make the settings, but uh, the art is created by these models. Um, this is, this is so the one part. The another part is um, what, for example, diffusion models do. This is this is not a sampling, because um, the diffusion model is uh, using all these data sets, uh, all this art, to learn how to draw. That's why um, it's like if you are art artist and you are going to art classes and. Uh, learn to draw an apple, for example, or a model, an act model, or you go into the museums and uh, draw up uh, other paintings. This is just you. You are trying to uh, to draw the patterns, uh, the objects, um, the lines, and so on. This is not the regurgitating of existing art. Um, and this why and um, diffusion models are working using transformer um, network transformer network is um, a very um, interesting system which uses uh, some kind of uh, self attention so um, it creates coherent pieces of text of music of um, visuals um, where everything has connection with it which is uh, with um, each other that's why it's not regurgitating of art it's not uh, remixing art. This is something completely different, completely new, so to say. Um, and for example, there was uh, this um, famous incident with uh, the artist Rutkowski, uh, who was uh, claiming um, about AI art. But again, uh, his uh, pro so his problem or his issue was quite different, and it was misunderstood in the so in the media because he was very glad that people used his name for the prompts, like draw me a, a castle with a dragon in the style of Rutkowski, of Greg Rutkowski. He was, uh, he appreciated it, but 
his issue was a very this is indeed an issue because people who created these images they posted them online with the prompts so they posted mm -hmm. also the text of the prompt so i created this image using the prompt um, a castle in the style of Rutkowski. and so he couldn't find his own work because the the internet the google was other filled with generated uh, generated um, images and his own images were something uh, so, uh, so to say um, somewhere in between so his criticism was uh, regarding quite different problem it's a problem of search engine it's a problem of how the ai artists uh, handle their work if they present it using so with uh, according with the prompts or if they just show the the work without prompts this is very complex um, complex discussion but in my experience ai art is not an art theft at all of course the if the artists don't want to be included in this data set it's their right and they should be excluded it's too late if the model is trained they cannot be excluded post facto mm -hmm. but on the other uh, side if they uh, exclude themselves from this data set um, they they leave the art world of ai so they are not part of this knowledge of ai what is art they are outsiders to say regarding this uh, ai model it's like uh, if an artist don't want to be excluded in the art um, lexica or in wikipedia and mm -hmm. this is like then he is not existent. Mm -hmm. So this is a very long discussion, and I think we will see more and more uh, scandals and so on. But people take it too uh, too emotionally, probably. Mm -hmm. yeah. hmm. Well said. Uh, good. Good. A good frame. We. We. This. Maybe this will be a discussion paper. Uh, so, but, the, but to any students watching, don't, don't blame, uh, mares, uh, for, <laughs> if this is your topic. Yeah. Um, well, I think we can, we'll stop there. I, I just want to say thank you so much for your time and, thank you too. um, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to stop the recording unless there's any final, final words or goodbyes. Yes. Well, uh, just, I. I ask everybody follow me, and we will uh, will uh, stay in touch with me. You can find me on Twitter and um, everywhere as Merzmensch, because I I would love to to speak with more people who are interested in art and in this intersection with uh, AI, and to to see what you have achieved or what you are experimenting in. Don't be uh, shy and um, just create. Wonderful. Thank and I'll you. share the, your contact info with the with students in the dialogue. So thank, thank you, you so much. much. You're welcome. Thank you.